My name is John Dawson, and uh, this is the second half of a video that I'm doing on uh, Macalito prints. Uh, this is a video on uh, how to do how to print your Macalito prints. Uh, the first thing you're going to need, of course, is ink. Either um, etching ink or litho ink works fine. You're going to need to thin the ink down a little bit with either linseed oil or stand oil. Then to roll out uh, your plate, you can use a traditional brayer like this, but what actually works uh, better for this process is an inexpensive uh, um, roller, uh, paint roller from the hardware store, and you're going to get uh, need to get uh, styrofoam uh, rollers, uh, the four-inch rollers, what you need. Um, I haven't tried every single uh, styrofoam roller that's out there, but this particular one uh, is uh, for cabinets, and uh, it seems to work very well, so that's something you might look for. Then you're going to need a, a container for, the, for water. This is a, a metal bowl that's very good. Um, it's better to have a metal bowl like this. They're easier to clean up. The ink won't stick to it. If you have a plastic container, the ink is going to stick to the to the sides of it when um, when you're done. It doesn't really matter if you're going to continue to use the same uh, container over and over. It just looks real grungy. But a metal bowl like this is really much nicer. It cleans up real nice. And you're going to need some sponges. Um, you're going to probably need some lemon juice uh, for the um, the water. That we, we'll discuss that a little later. It's good to have some paper towels on hand. And then um, to keep your hands from getting full of ink, it's good to... Uh, Get some uh, surgical gloves like these. I think you can get them at most uh, drugstores. They're very inexpensive. If um, if you don't have the gloves, it's not necessary, but your hands are probably going to wind up looking a lot like these gloves instead. Um, so you it would probably be a lot better for, for you to have um, surgical gloves. Otherwise, your hands are going to get pretty pretty messy. So the next thing uh, I'll be doing is uh, uh, mixing up some ink. Okay, uh, I'm going to just uh, mix up a small amount of ink. Uh, this may be um, superfluous for uh, many people um, who are used to doing uh, any, almost any kind of printmaking. But, um, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, linseed oil to the ink and then uh, mix it together. Well, it's uh, fairly loose. Then I uh, just need to spread some of the ink out like this. And uh, you take uh, your uh, paint roller and you keep uh, loading the, um, the um, roller up with ink until it's fully, fully uh, loaded with ink and now you're um, you're ready to uh, to ink the plate. Now, one of the things that you can do is uh, if you were going to do a number of uh, uh, Macalito prints, print a number of prints over uh, a couple of days. Uh, as I mentioned before, each plate you have to do all at one time. But if you had more than one plate to do, and um, instead of uh, going through a roller after roller, or a paint roller, um, you can take some um, aluminum foil and uh, you can put the, the roller in the aluminum foil, you know, and uh, kind of wrap it up like this. And then um, it'll be ready to use the next day. So you don't have to waste... Um, you know, a lot of rollers, uh, if you're going to do a number of, of printings, you know, over a number of hours or a number of days. Okay, now for the water. Um, the thing that seems to work best is uh, doing the water with some lemon juice in it. That would be uh, three cups of water to one ounce of lemon juice. 
Now, you don't have to put the lemon juice in the water, but it seems to really help when you're um, using the sponge to go across the plate to remove the, um, any ink that you don't want to print. Um, it seems to be helpful in that. Uh, if you don't use uh, the lemon juice, it's no, no big deal. It's not going to ruin anything. It's just uh, a lot more helpful if you, uh, if you use the lemon juice. Um, you could also use uh, citric acid, which would probably be about a tablespoon or so, maybe two, of citric acid into a, a, um, a couple of cups of water. Um, you know, the lemon juice is far more accessible and easy to use. Not too many people probably have uh, citric, citric acid on hand, but you could also use that too. Well, next is the paper. Um, it goes without saying, I would think, uh, that you should use uh, uh, good quality printing paper. Um, I generally use uh, Reeves BFK, but there's all kinds of fine print papers out there in German X, Reeves, uh, um, Stonehenge, uh, all kinds. Um, in doing, in, in uh, using the paper, you have uh, three options. Um, you can use the paper dry, just uh, you know, put it on the plate and run it through the press, or, or however you are going to do it. Um, you can soak the paper like you would for an etching or uh, intaglio, which uh, will uh, show a little bit about that in a minute. And um, then there's uh, uh, some people size the paper. It's a little more complicated. Um, I'll show. Uh, I'll be showing how to mix the sizing and sizing the paper. So um, that's uh, the possibilities for, for doing the paper. Now, if you're going to print on damp paper, you're going to have to uh, uh, soak the paper in a, in a tray of water, um, just like you would if you were doing um, etchings or intaglios. Uh, there's a number of ways to do this. Uh, this isn't the only way. This is the way that I do it. You have some blotter paper. You put the the, the uh, soaked paper down on the blotter paper and put another piece of blotter paper over the top. And I use a, an old um, an old roller. Um, you could use your hand. It's kind of hard on the hands to do. And um, you um, Keep uh, doing that until the um, until the paper is just damp and not shiny. It only takes a couple of times. Now this paper is um, is ready to print. Um, some of the um, the printmakers that uh, were printing Macalito prints uh, size the paper. And to make the sizing, it's really pretty simple. You're going to take equal amounts of paint thinner and water and a small amount of uh, gum arabic into a plastic bottle. Shake it up. This is not like the casein uh, mixture. We have to keep shaking it. And then uh, you have to apply the... Um, this um, sizing mixture to both sides of the um, the paper before you print it. And we're going to do a little demonstration of how uh, to do that. I put the paper down on a glass palette, which uh, actually works pretty well if you have one. And then the um, solution that uh, we mixed up with the uh, uh, paint thinner and water and gum arabic, uh, you paint on. You have to do both sides. You turn it over and do the same thing again, of course, on the other side. And then um, once you have both sides covered with the size, you kind of uh, roll it up or fold it up like this. And then um, you need to, um, to put it into a plastic bag um, so it won't dry out. Um, you keep it in there until you're ready to print. 
This is a plate I printed with uh, first uh, dry paper, then damp paper, and then sized paper. Except for the fact that uh, as you print it, the image tends to fill in regardless. Um, I didn't see any real advantage to using the sized paper. Uh, the, um, the damp paper uh, actually does work better than just the um, dry paper, but uh, for all the trouble it's worth, I wouldn't bother with doing the sizing. Um, I didn't think it really made that much of a difference. Well, now we're on to the actual inking of the plate. Uh, the first thing you have to do is take a wet sponge and remove all the gum arabic. Uh, this doesn't take much. Uh, two or three passes with the sponge usually removes the uh, gum arabic. And then uh, with the uh, roller fully loaded, you go over the, uh, the image um, uh, with the ink uh, to uh, transfer it to, uh, to the plate. You have to keep the plate uh, moist uh, all the time in order to uh, resist the ink in the areas that you don't uh, want it to print. And as I said, um, putting lemon juice in the water um, seems to help uh, keep uh, the ink uh, or being able to wipe off the ink in the areas um, that you really don't want it to, uh, to be printing. You uh, need to do this about uh, three or four times uh, until the, um, the plate uh, is uh, fully inked. Well, one of the uh, kind of unique things you can do with Macalito printing is um, you can make uh, some color prints. Um, what you're going to need is uh, some watercolors, a, a small little um, watercolor kit like this is fine, plenty. You're going to need a brush, of course, and then something to mix the watercolors on. This is a little watercolor palette. You could use any number of things that would work. Um, it's probably best to um, mix uh, the watercolors or the colors that you want to put in the print. Mix that up first. Then uh, you're going to uh, ink the plate completely to the stage where it's ready to print. Then you uh, just simply take the watercolors and you, you paint in um, the areas that you want to, uh, to, be, to be colored. Um, you can do numerous colors. Uh, you can do numerous numerous parts of the of the plate, and then um, you're going to put that through the press, and um, you'll have a color print. Um, now, one of the things you have to do is uh, I think this will only really work on damp dampened paper, or the sized paper, which is also damp. Uh, would also work. That's what causes the the uh, watercolor to transfer to the um, to the paper. I, I doubt if it'd work on dry paper. I haven't tried it, but I don't think it would work on dry paper. The other thing is, it's a it's a one time thing. Um, you uh, ink the plate up, you add the watercolors, put it through the press, and then to get a second color print, uh, you have to ink it again and then add the watercolor again and have to do it each time that you want to do a color print. Very simple and that's how you do it. And uh, I'll do a little uh, little demo on that. Well as I said the first thing you have to do is to ink the plate to the point where um, it's ready to print. Uh, once you have the, um, the plate completely inked uh, then you can begin to add the watercolors. Um, because the plate is uh, damp to start with. The, the watercolors uh, go on actually pretty, pretty well. Um, the one thing you have to be a little careful of is uh, if you get the watercolors on a little too loosely and they puddle up, there is the possibility that they then can smear into the image when um, the, um, the plate goes through the press. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, you can um, you can print Macalito prints uh, without a press. 
Um, what you need to do is uh, basically put it on the floor between some newspapers and put the paper on top and um, step on it. And uh, I have a, a little uh, demonstration of how to do that. Well, to begin with, uh, you put down some newspaper and put the uh, Macalito plate on top of it and then place the, um, the uh, printer paper on top of that. Uh, in this case, I used um, uh, some uh, sized uh, paper. Then um, you want to just uh, kind of stamp on it. Uh, it's best to do this in your stocking feet or with soft slippers. Uh, you just uh, sort of walk around in a circle on it. And then uh, you uh, pull back the um, newsprint and uh, pull up uh, the, um, the paper. And there you have print. No press. Works fine. Well, this concludes the uh, videos that uh, I'm doing on Macalito prints. Um, as I did with the uh, first video, I'm going to include some uh, Macalito prints that I did. Uh, and as I said, I'm going to be picking what I consider to be the, the best uh, prints of, uh, of each, uh, of each um, plate. And uh, I'll include a short narration of... Uh, what I did uh, on the plate, which kind of plywood I used and so forth, kind of gives an idea of uh, what different materials uh, look like uh, when they're printed up. And then um, I also at the end have uh, information about my Facebook page and um, website. Now this print is titled uh, Slaughter and um, it's done on birch plywood. I applied a casein sizing to start with, and then the image was done with a China marker, uh, crepa, and lithocrans. I painted in uh, areas with um, uh, watercolor, and then sized a second time with uh, rabbit skin glue. This one is entitled um, Moving On. It's uh, It was done on maple. Uh, plywood. Uh, I applied a casing sizing and then the image was done with um, China marker, uh, various kinds of uh, lithocrans uh, and crepa. Um, it was a, a second sizing of uh, rabbit skin glue and I printed it on damp paper. This one's called Made in the Shade. I used uh, maple plywood the image was done with uh, just um, tush and uh, china markers, uh, then painted in the background with um, watercolors. Uh, I sized it with rabbit skin glue, and then for the printing I used uh, damp BFK, Reeves BFK paper. This one's called Survivor 2. It was done on uh, birch plywood with a casein sizing. The image was uh, done with a hard ground, a solid marker, a china marker, and uh, lithocrans. And uh, it, uh, the paper wasn't uh, dampened. It, it was dry paper and printed on Stonehenge paper instead of uh, a usual BFK.